Brett Bayer, anchor of Special Report, joins us now. We just got these new numbers in from the border. Uh, so under Biden-Harris, these are the number of lawfully allowed to enter since September of 20, I'm sorry, January of 2023. So about a year and a half, nearly 1.4 million. By the cell phone app, it was 850,000. And by these migrant flights, 530,000. Okay, Brett, I think what Garrett just did is be able to take those numbers. We throw out numbers all the time. And the numbers feel big. And then you see a community like that that is saying, look, like the guy Jeffrey Campbell saying, like, I, I understand why they came. But I also understand that with the, the difficulties that we're having here in a community. It was very telling. Yeah, it was. Good morning, guys. Morning. I think that, you know, all the focus on Springfield, Ohio and the eating and the dogs and the cats and that whole controversy took away from these towns that are dealing with legal immigrants under the Biden-Harris administration. It's both the C. A BP app, one app that brings folks in, as well as this CHNV. This is Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, Venezuela migrant flights that were set up mm. uh, to bring migrants in to these different communities. Now, they're done legally under the administration's auspices, but for some of these places, like Logansport and others, uh, small towns, it is uh, tough to deal with in those numbers, uh, in the schools, as you heard Garrett's report. Mm. Uh, that's 1.4 million additional people. And so while they say the illegal numbers, the crossings are down since the executive orders were put back in in June, those other numbers... Um, you know, augment that bigger picture. Mm -hmm. When we ask who does a better job in immigration, Trump leads by 15 points. And m maybe this comes to pass and maybe on the 6th or 7th of or 8th of November after the votes are tallied, we're sitting here in New York saying, well, I mean, you know, the voters were telling us something. And you last night had Larry Hogan on. Now, he's in Maryland, a different state, and his reaction in immigration went like this with you. People all across the board are concerned about this issue. We, we border on Washington, D.C. You know, we're nowhere near the border, but people are concerned about the, the crime that are, it's, the fentanyl crisis, the human trafficking, what it's doing to some of our major cities. And this is an issue where uh, we're, we're actually winning over large numbers of Hispanic voters who are here who also don't want to see the crime in their communities. That's, that's another part of this, too, like the, the Latino vote. Yeah. And now, you, you tried to get an answer out of her in your interview with a number and were, um, shall I say, unsuccessful with her answering your specific question. Yes. Um, numerous times. So mm -hmm. I, I think that that uh, part of that, you know, the acknowledgement of the numbers that have come over is not part of the answer that's baked in the cake. You know, they, they automatically go to the first bill they dropped, which was an amnesty bill, basically. And then the second, um, three and a half years later, effort to have a bipartisan legislation. Now, former Governor uh, Hogan is not a fan of former President Trump at all. But when it comes to immigration, he is on his side and is um, definitely pushing to, to deal with this issue. Uh, let's get a little political question in for you as well. Um, last night, uh, Harris was asked about some of the, you know, the state of the race. And I just want to show with some of these headlines that our team put together here, that Democrats fear the race is slipping away, the clock is ticking on Kamala Harris, early voting signals some early danger for her in Nevada, Dempsey warnings with youth in Arizona, and that there are ominous signs for Kamala Harris's blue wall because it could be collapsing. Uh, that's not me saying that. That's not Hammer saying that. That's not even Jesse Waters saying that. That, <laughs> that is from reporters who are on the ground, and these are the headlines that they came back with. What's the feel of the race to you right now? Yeah, I think all of those uh, bullet points, all of those data points are accurate, and they're just raw numbers, early vote numbers, but we always have to have the caveat, and uh, I think Republicans can feel good about that, uh, but, you know, the get out the vote historically for Democrats uh, has been really good in the closing days. It seems like uh, Vice President Harris is closing with the threat to America from the former president. You saw that Atlantic piece uh, referencing former mm -hmm. chief of staff uh, John Kelly uh, talking about how the president talked about Hitler and, and all of these things will be packaged together uh, to make this closing argument that she's making alongside former Congresswoman Liz Cheney. Does that work? We don't know. Right now, the momentum heading into this week seemed to be on the former president's side. Um, but the get out the vote operation in different states is really the 
undetermined yeah. factor. A lot of people doing deep dives these days. <laughs> <laughs> They're going deep into the weeds. Yeah, come up for air. All right. Thank <laughs> yeah. you, Brett. We'll see, see you at six tonight. O'clock. Thanks, Brett. See you soon. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.